after I posted a video on NFTs explaining what NFTs are, there were a lot of people who reacted, K-pop fans, who said that it's still very harmful for the environment because it's unnecessary. It's another unnecessary product that eventually management companies and labels are and big companies are going to uh, to um, for, force feed K-pop fans, which is unnecessary because we already have enough number of products that people that fans are buying. And so coming up with something new, regardless of how minimal the environmental effect will be, is still bad. I am not surprised with that reaction primarily because I did discuss what NFTs are. I did not discuss the benefits of NFTs. So this is what this video is for. Discuss the benefits of NFTs. Before I proceed, just want to do a full disclosure. I work for a, a, crypto a cryptocurrency exchange company here in the US and I do own some cryptocurrencies. And if you haven't watched that video of me explaining what NFTs are, there should be a video card coming out on the screen right now. So just please go ahead and click that. Now, benefits of NFTs. Number one, it's fully, fully traceable so it can protect the artist and the owner of the art for example you bought john cook's painting his self-portrait and then some now that some somebody can easily copy that right they, they, they can du duplicate that because it's been all over <laughs> the internet now you as an owner of course want to protect yourself and be able to say i actually own that so if anybody tries to resell it you can call them out and you then it's going to be ultimate it's going to be definitive the record on the blockchain is going to be definitive which means we can and that that can cause and that can affect a lot of um, global rules when it comes to intellectual properties or just properties by itself right now um each country they have their own judicial process but it with the invention with the development of blockchain we can actually have international laws when it comes to artwork so if somebody in the u.s tries to redistribute something that you already own then you can actually go after them and the record on the blockchain is going to be definitive because it is an immutable ledger it's a ledger that you cannot change now it goes the same way for artists and this is going to be even more beneficial for independent artists those who don't have that are not signed by any kind of label or management company they can come up with a beat, they can come up with a song, with a music, whatever, or a poem or a book, put it on the blockchain. And if somebody tries, if they're from Zimbabwe and somebody in the US tries to nick a part of their song or their album or their book or their movie, it's easy for them to come out, to come after these people who are plagiarizing them and tell them, hey, that is mine and it's in the blockchain. The blockchain will tell you that it's mine because I created that 25 years ago and you're nicking off me and you're not giving me credit. So it's even more, um, it protects the, the artist and the owners of the art. I know that a lot of you are going to say, well, many of these management companies are just going to try and take advantage of their artists more, maybe come up with more art, register that under their name, and then when the artist eventually becomes independent, they won't be able to benefit from it because it is owned by the management company. The solution is to try and change the management company and the rules of the management company, but you don't clip the development of the technology that could potentially potentially protect artists just because you don't like the, the management companies and the way that they're running things. Okay, number two, unique sales. I know this is going to be, or unique um, attribution basically. I know there's a big talk about mass buying of many products of certain groups in k-pop or or asians uh, asian bands in general there's there's a lot of fandoms who actually band together they raise money and then they mass buy certain albums as a result the number of albums sold isn't actually um it's not unique it's not it doesn't really give a, a, un, uh, a complete and accurate picture on how many fans they actually have. It just gives you a picture on how much money a fandom actually has. So I basically, if I'm rich, which I'm not, but if I'm rich, I can donate $100,000 to a fandom and they can mass buy the album and that's going to result to even more sales. Now, with 
if everything is in the blockchain, it, it, it is easy to attribute a sale to a unique or non-unique address. So we can say it doesn't have to identify the person that's buying it, but it's easy for us to check and say, okay, so there were actually 150,000 copies of group A that went to this person or this address or this code. So then we can have two charts. One is the unique buyers and one is the unique buys and the total sales. Because at the end of the day, I do agree a sale is a sale, right? So if I have money to buy a million copies of my favorite girl group or boy band's album, then you've got nothing. That's none of your business. That's my money and I wanted to spend it on them. And so a sale is a sale. But it's going to give us a more accurate view on who are really just very good at pulling money together or who's a, who actually has the general public support <laughs> now again it doesn't have to um it doesn't have to identify the virus so the buyer so it can still protect your identity if you want it hidden uh so i know that there's that's a big i don't want to get into the the art the debate on mass buying and whatever but that's one benefit and that can also spill over to all other technologies so for example when a music video actually comes out there's a lot of fandoms as well that they come together they rent so there's this mass streaming going on in other countries so that they can push the views up they pay for those mass streaming now with the development of the, of the blockchain they can actually specifically identify again where the streams are coming from or the views are coming from so again it's not going to be um it's not going to be 100% the solution in ensuring that one view is one unique user, but it's going to be a better one than the current one that we have. I know that some people are gonna say, well, don't you think YouTube knows how many unique views they're getting? They are very dependent on an algorithm. But when if everything is on the blockchain, the blockchain is specifically designed to identify sources and they can attribute the views, the streams, the sale to a unique code, to a unique person or to a unique source. So it, again, it'll provide a better view, a better um, accounting of the actual performance of a song or an album or an artist. Okay, next, it'll get rid of distribution companies so right now a big chunk of the sale actually goes to dis distribution companies primarily because they hold the distribution <laughs> they have the network that will make the products accessible to the public so for example amazon is a distribution company um, target is a, a distribution company walmart you know all of those that's uh that the, those those Entity, the, those stores or places where the products become available, those are uh, managed. That's the network of a distribution company. BTS famously had a deal with Columbia. Columbia was actually their distribution distribution company for the longest time. However, they're not the management company. Now they get a big chunk of that sale. So what was supposed to go to the pockets of the idols or the artists it actually goes to them so it is going to be again more beneficial to independent artists even more so than they are to k-pop bands or k-pop groups because you don't need a distribution company via the blockchain you can make your stuff available to everybody uh, you can set up a system where so anyway it's going to be an entirely different discussion but that's the the bottom line you can get rid of the distribution system uh, you can go f the art the fans can go directly from the artist or directly from the management company and then straight to them so weavers who's also um sort of starting uh because they have a weaver shop they they're starting to build a distribution arm for, for their company. So this is going to be beneficial. I know you're going to say that, well, it's just going to benefit the management company more. So that's why I'm saying the solution is to change the system of the company, but not that's just because the management company is flawed doesn't mean that we clip all of our, that all of the development that we can do that could favor other artists. So 
you know, if you're an independent art artist, the blockchain is going to be very, very good for you. You get rid of uh, many of the expenses involved in setting up and running a distribution company. The blockchain is actually trustless. It, does, it means that you do not need to trust anybody and take anybody's word or their judgment. Everything is mathematical and everything is scientific. So everything is fully verifiable. If you have a certain claim, you don't need to go to a judge or a mediator that whose judgment may be tainted or influenced the blockchain is trustless it is going to depend based solely on data and on the processes rather than human judgment so for example um if you, somebody tries to steal your stuff whether it's your idea or your style of of art uh, for example if you're if your if you have a certain um, art style if you're an animator or a comic book artist and you're creating your own art somebody nicks it off if your stuff is on the blockchain you don't need to sue anybody <laughs> and go to a court you can just depend on the blockchain you can make your claim the blockchain will determine that you're the original artist uh, owner of this style of art and you can get the credit and that's the benefit of a trustless system we don't have to go to the court and say what do you think judge <laughs> because that can be tainted that that can be that's a human being that can be influenced the blockchain is trustless next in relation to uh, to equality you can now also enjoy fractional ownership better so for example if um, if there's a, a movie that's being produced and the, the it'll be easy for because it's tokenized right so for example a management company decides or a production company decides to do a movie but we can offer anybody to be a producer in the movie right now everything is um, limited so there has to be a certain amount that you can contribute to the film for you to become a producer but in the blockchain they can actually create if it'll cost if it'll cost a movie if it'll cost um 300 million to actually to to produce a certain movie they can create 300 million tokens right and so all, all you need to do as a person is just contribute a dollar and you're already a part of the production so i know that's an extreme example but it's actually actually um possible <laughs> it's possible in blockchain and it's actually true fractional ownership of anything may be possible it's the same it's the same with uh, investing in real estate although it's not connected connected to entertainment but it's also connected into it can also be visible sorry possible or applicable in only real estate in any country that you want so for example i am building a hotel and i it's going to take me one billion dollars to actually put up this this is just an example to actually construct this hotel and i don't know you're in some part of asia you have no visa to go to the us but you want to own some property in the us and you also want to to earn from it then i can put out i can tokenize this project and i don't know like come out with a hundred a, a one billion tokens and all you need to contribute is one dollar and you become a part owner of that company or of that hotel so once it start own earning then you get your um you get a dividend out of it now you can buy more tokens for more money then you also get more dividends or revenue that's one now there's a lot more other potential that it offers it can we can eventually do streaming in the blockchain as i've said then the attribution of the unique streams would be would be easier uh, the global collaboration is going to be easier it's it'll be easier for hollywood for artists from other parts of asia from iran or from from laos or from thailand to collaborate with artists in the u.s because every negotiation is going to be in the blockchain you don't need to pay a lawyer from 
in Thailand and a lawyer in the US just to make sure you you're right as a producer or as a musician is going to be protected because everything is going to be in the blockchain it's going to be clearly drawn and clearly written to make sure that your interest will be up you will be upheld and when time comes for you to get paid you know it'll be very visible for you how much you should be paid based on the sale of the song or whatever it is that you collaborated on based on the sales streaming and other revenues of that project so it'll benefit you as a creator as an investor as an artist there will be we are going to get rid the blockchain is going to eventually get rid of many many institutions that are actually taking advantage of many artists or many smaller investors um, it's going to get rid of the distribution companies uh, uh, management companies will have to put themselves in check because as i've said everything is going to be more visible so they can just control things the way that they want it maneuver things the way that they want it because all the records are going to be on the blockchain um, and then there's uh, equal chances uh, for every artist in the world not just to collaborate with other artists but it'll be easier for them to go out and um, and put their music out there right there right now for example if you are not signed with any company and you just decided okay I'm just gonna put my music out in YouTube or in SoundCloud or any other kind of platform out there you're still in the mercy of the algorithm of YouTube which is written by employees of YouTube which YouTube or Google are actually is actually paying but when you are but when we start using the blockchain everything is going to be democratized so it's not going to be centralized there will be no central central authority that will control things it'll be everybody running this platform and that'll put everybody in check more in check okay so what are the disadvantages um it because because it's the because it's decentralized it will take time for us to get into the rhythm of things remember that everything is if things are run by nodes which means nodes are not human being they are computers which are owned by people but this nodes run this computers one run a certain program and that program cannot be um, altered by the nodes but just like any other mathematical computer program scientific programs out there things ne need to evolve they need to as we do as human beings evolve as situations evolve things need to evolve and so that's one disadvantage we are we need a lot of we need to be fast in keeping keeping up with the development of humanity and our needs and we need to make sure that the the, the programs are running in accordance to what we need right it ne it needs to be written right the programs need to be written right for it to serve us um perfectly uh there have been some blockchains that have been hacked there have been some blockchains that messed up you know uh but that's uh that's part of it all the same way humans have messed things up there there have been things that have been messed up on the blockchain as well but it's easier to fix because it's visible it's easier to fix because there are investors that are checking it and making and they're making sure that their investments are are running correctly you want the as an investor your primary uh, if you're investing in a certain blockchain your primary your primary concern is to make sure that it's running perfectly it's serving its for its purpose so that's your concern you just want it to run correctly it doesn't need to favor anybody but itself okay i hope i'm making sense but that's the biggest disadvantage of the blockchain it can mess up it is not perfect the same way humans are not perfect uh, but at least a blockchain is easier to correct humans are vulnerable <laughs> they have their own interests and very very unpredictable okay so i hope that clears it up and if you have just as a rundown it um it protects the rights of the artists it in terms of attribution we can easily attribute unique sales unique streams unique views 
we can get rid of distribution companies and there's a lot of distribution companies in the western world that are are way more powerful it's very very irritating because they can mess up your distribution which will equate to your products being mishandled or not reaching the hands of the fans or the consumers it will be visible to everybody uh, everything is going to be visible there will be equality in terms of opportunities and fractional ownership is going to be visible and of course it allows uh, even more potential for, for collaboration, equal opportunity for other artists, and uh, it can get rid of, of central institutions. I hope that's helpful. Thank you.